this little episode we are going to be uh, constructing platonic solids. Platonic solids are very old construction of Plato and they are the most symmetrical solids we know. Um, they have all faces congruent polygons and all vertices are the same and all edges are the same. So to build those platonic solids we will obviously use equilaterals and the small, simplest equilateral that we can use is an equilateral triangle. So let's use equilateral triangles. And now let's have a method of constructing those platonic solids. We will use the idea that we, uh, that we developed earlier of actually looking at the vertex. So we are going to be putting so many of polygons in each vertex. So to start with, we use those simplest triangles and then let's see what is the smallest number of triangles that we can put in each vertex. Well, one, maybe two. Okay, two. Let's put two. If we put two, we do not get a solid. So then probably the smallest number is three. So let's put three triangles in each vertex for that solid. So here are three triangles and we make a vertex. This vertex has right now two triangles, so we'll put a third, yes, and we have a solid. So we've built a solid, we already know what it is, it's an uh, equilateral based um, pyramid, triangular pyramid, but we can also name it differently, derived from the number of triangles that, that make this solid. Uh, there are four of triangles, so four in Greek is tetra, so the solid will be named tetrahedron. Okay, so now after building the solid that had three triangles in each vertex, we are going to proceed with the same idea and build a solid that has four triangles in each vertex. So here are the triangles. Let's start putting four triangles in each vertex. So here are two, three, four triangles and we will make a vertex. But now we look here and it's only two triangles. So we put another one, three and four. So we basically look at each vertex and count how many triangles we have and we add up until we get to four. So we have three here, four, we close this vertex and we top it up here with the last triangle. Okay, we've built a solid. What is the name of the solid? How many triangles did we use? We used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight triangles. So the solid is named octahedron from octa eight in Greek. Okay, so now once we build the structures that have uh, three triangles in each vertex, which was tetrahedron, four triangles in each vertex, which was octahedron. Now let's move to a uh, five triangles in each vertex. So let's let's see what we will end up with. Let's count those triangles, and in each vertex there will be one coming. So we have four and a five, and that makes a vertex, right? So now we have to look at this at each of the other vertices. Now, in this vertex, we have just two triangles right now. So we put a third and a fourth and a fifth, and we join. Then this vertex has only three triangles. So we put four and we put a five and we join. This triangle, this vertex has three. So we put four and we put a 5 and we join. So you can see that we do not really have to even know what we are building, we just have to very carefully watch each vertex and make sure that there are 5 triangles in each. So we can count to 5 easily. So it's a 5 here, right now it's 4 in this one. So we put a fifth, we do not close any vertices until we check and count to five. So this is three, four, and a five. And this one has a four and now a five. This one has 
4 and a 5 and this one has a 4 and a 5. So here we are. We built this beautiful structure, very round. And now what would be the name of the structure? Um, as before, we will derive it from the number of uh, faces, which is the number of triangles here. And so we have to count them. So what is the easiest way? Well, probably we could just top it up like this and we have five triangles here, five here, which is ten. And then we have to count the middle here. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all together we have twenty triangles. Twenty in Greek is icosi. So this um, structure, this polyhedron, will be named icosahedron. So now we have built three structures that have three triangles in each vertex, four triangles in each vertex, five triangles in each vertex. So now the next logical step is to put a structure that has six triangles in each vertex. Okay, so let's let's build this one. One, two, three, four, five, and six triangles in this vertex. Well, let's build another one. And this is what typically happens when we build it in classrooms or we build it at workshops. There is going to be construction going up like that and people start to actually build a structure. But really, when we examine it a little bit closer, we can see that this is really a flat surface that we are building, not a three-dimensional object. Like with the, with the five triangles in each vertex before, we, we were building an object that had some curvature, like this, right? So we were at each vertex, we are adding up a um, triangle and we could build a solid structure while with this one this structure is flat and it will with addition of more triangles it'll still be flat so we will never build a solid that has a curvature to it so here we're coming to the end of the rule we could build the structures with three four five but with six triangles in each vertex the result is a flat construction so rather than building a polyhedron we build a tile so this one is a triangular tile that we built it's a regular tile like the other solids were regular but it's not a solid it's now a tile that with six triangles in each vertex the result changes Okay, now that we've built the six triangles in each vertex, let's have a look if it's possible to build the seven triangles in each vertex. Well, let's let's have a look. Let's try it out. Here it's we add a seventh triangle to this vertex. So what we came up with is actually a surface that is not even flat. It's beyond flat, right? So for mathematicians, it's actually a very interesting construction. It's called a hyperplane. Hyper surface or hyperplane and it has lots of interesting mathematical uh, properties but it's it's not something that we are usually kind of concerned in our elementary geometry but nevertheless it's very interesting to actually even have a look at it and see how it that it exists so with triangles we came to the definite end of constructions by six triangles. The seven triangles put us out into hyperplane. Okay, now that we have exhausted the structures that are possible with triangles, natural thing would be to move to the next equilateral polygon, which is square. So let's look at the square. Again, start with three squares in each vertex to follow the same rule. So let's build a structure that has three squares in each vertex. Okay, this one. So here you have three squares in this vertex. Now this vertex, let's put third square here. And to this third square here. And we top it up with the last square. 
exactly what have we got here? We have a very well known, very familiar to us Q. Okay? But if we wanted to call this according to the Greek naming, what would that be? Well, it has six faces. Six in Greek is hexa. So, so this cube would be called, could also be called hexahedron. Now that we've built a structure that has three squares in each vertex, let's move on to next step, which is four squares in each vertex. Okay, so let's put four squares in a vertex. Two, three, and four. So we can see that we actually have a plane structure again. So we are not building a solid, we already have a flat surface. So with four squares in each vertex, we've built another tile. This is another regular tile, it's called square tile. Is it possible to extend this construction to five squares in each vertex? Well, of course, we could try. What would happen? We have to just insert one more square into this construction, like this. So what we end up with is another hyperplane, which is, again, beyond, beyond plane. So now that we have exhausted possibilities with triangles and with squares, the next equilateral is a pentagon, regular pentagon. So let's now examine the same idea with pentagons. So let's use pentagons and build a structure that has the minimum three pentagons in each vertex. Okay, so let's take those pentagons and actually start putting them three in each vertex. So we have three pentagons, we close. Here we have two, so we can put a third, and so on, until we build a structure. So you can see that it's going very well. We are almost halfway done now. And we are putting now here a third pentagon. Here it's only two, so we put a third, like this. And here. Here. Okay, and here. Super, we've done it. So, and then we can top up because each of them has only two, so we put a third on top. Okay, so we have a next structure that has three pentagons in each vertex. Okay, how many pentagons have we got here? We have two at the bottom and at the top, and then five, one, two, three, four, five in this layer, and five in this layer. So 10 and two, 12 pentagons in this polyhedron. So what would be the name? 12 in Greek is dodeca, so this polyhedron will be called dodecahedron. Now let's examine uh, what how, how further we can actually take this construction. We had three pentagons in each vertex in the previous construction. So now let's look what happens if we can make four pentagons in each vertex. So we have three, we have four, three, and a fourth is actually making it out of the plane because because it happens always when the sum of those angles here is more than 360 degrees. And here it is, almost 360 degrees, but if we add 70 more, which is this angle, then it actually gets out of the plane and we have a hyperplane. So now we came to the next equilateral poly polygon, which is hexagon. How many hexagons can we put in each vertex to make a solid? Well, we have to start with three, like ever, like all the time before. So let's take three hexagons and put them into a vertex. Okay? We have 
a flat construction. So we can see that with hexagons we immediately arrive at flat construction. This is no surprise because this angle, some of those 3 times 220 degrees is 360 degrees, so this construction is flat. So we can see that with hexagons we didn't even start building a solid. We immediately arrived at a flat construction which is a third regular tile, which is hexagonal tile. So now let's uh, review the, the, the construction that we actually made. Out of triangles, we can see that we made three polyhedra, tetrahedron, octahedron, and icosahedron, with three, four, and five triangles. And then we made a tile, a regular tile, with six triangles. So six triangles in each vertex is the end of the road. We cannot go any further than that. So here are the structures for triangles. Tetrahedron, octahedron, an icosahedron, and a regular tile. Now then we move to, to squares. And with squares, we have three squares in each vertex for Q or hexahedron. And we put it right here beside the, the tetrahedron for three. And with four, we have already a tile. So we can see that with squares, there are only two possibilities, one solid and one regular tile. Now the time is to move to pentagons, right? So we just move those a little bit here. And with pentagons, we had, for three pentagons, we had dodecahedron. So it sits here beside the tetrahedron and cube for three in each vertex. There is a, tetra, there is a mm, dodecahedron and there is no tile. It's not possible to make a tile with pentagons, regular tile. So here is the end of the road for, for pentagons. So now hexagons. For hexagons, you can see that with three hexagons in each vertex, we just made a tile. We do not even have a solid. So this tile sits here, right above the tetrahedron cube and dodecahedron. Here it's a hexagonal tile and there's no solid possible and that's the end of the road. So here in this little construction we can see that it's in a, in a sense a summary of a 3D space. That's all there is, that's all that it's possible in 3D space for regular solids.